Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ 329 to 333. Therapy quote number 329. Only the amygdala is well developed at birth. That's maybe a reminder for new parents or something for new parents to keep in mind. Uh, because if the child ends up with an insecure attachment style, that'll probably overstimulate the amygdala. Um, there's even a comedy parody about this uh, called a Bob and his enlarged amygdala, and they created a syndrome called EAS, enlarged amygdala syndrome, where if the amygdala is overstimulated or quote enlarged, I guess, uh, then it, it can lead to uh, the person being impulsive and uh, having a kind of a being hyper vigilant, un unnecessarily hyper vigilant, unnecessarily impulsive, unnecessarily um, reactive. It's like a as if it were PTSD, basically. So parents offer the secure attachment style. Uh, then the other parts of the brain develop, have more of a chance to develop. Remember, if the person is stressed too much, if the amygdala is overstimulated, the other parts of the brain kind of go temporarily offline, so to speak. And then um, remember what we said, what the guy said before about school shock. Some children were unprepared for school. They were shocked. That overstimulated them. They became fear mode, fear, uh, flight mode, and the mind flighted, and they were a little disassociated, and the person was labeled as having a learning disability. But it wasn't a learning disability. He can learn. It's just that he was in school shock. He was afraid, so he couldn't calm down to learn. Later, he could calm down. He started learning, you know, that kind of thing. So it's interesting that, um, you know, maybe with the biological birth, the amygdala is developed, but uh, with the psychological birth at the age of three, uh, then the other parts of the brain... See, the hippocampus is set to come online at the age of three as, as well. Right? The hippocampus is responsible for uh, memory and perception and learning and, and so on. And the mid-prefrontal cortex, I think it is, uh, is responsible for having a broader view of things so on. Anyways, uh, just an interesting little little thing there. Only the amygdala is developed at birth. See, the baby is so dependent uh, on the mother, so all he can do is feel safe or afraid. You know, so his emotional responses are limited as a baby, right? Okay, something to think about. TQ 330. In their recognition of projective identification, clients become aware of their shadow work. The reacquisition and reintegration of projected parts of the self. So as we said before, projection is a mirror defense. So what we don't know about ourselves, we just say it belongs to someone else, that's a projection, every man is my mirror, but the purpose of that is so that we can reintegrate, reown, reacquire what we project on outward and admit that it's a part of us, but we project it because it's anxiety producing to feel that we own it, but the goal is to own it, to, uh, to uh, do our so-called shadow work, right? 331 The heart is the capital of the mind. The mind is a single state. The heart and the mind together make a single continent. One is the population, numerous enough, this ecstatic nation. Seek, it is yourself. little poem there from Emily Dickinson about reuniting the body and the mind. 
the heart and the mind, the feeling self with the body mind, right? Um, so just sort of like a little metaphorical way of uh, knowing thyself. Remember, the self is the is the the conscious, maybe the mind, and the unconscious, which may be the wounded. Here she's saying it's the heart, so that's the, the feeling self. So the feeling self has been put in the shadow, it's denied, and we have the mind. So we have to reunite the two. So so she's saying the heart is the capital, is the capital of the mind. So that implies the union right there of heart and mind. The mind is a single state, condition, but the heart is in the mind. Right? The heart and mind together make a single continent. So there's the totality of the person. One, the person, is the population. It's enough. We're, we're united. We're, we're one. This good feeling, seek. It is yourself. Know thyself. Once more. The heart is the capital of the mind. The mind is a single state. The heart and the mind together make a single continent. One is the population. Numerous enough, this ecstatic nation. Seek, it is yourself. So when we're searching for ourself, we're searching for the reunion of all that we're aware of and all that we're unaware of to reintegrate, to reacquire and reintegrate the projected parts of ourselves to bring, to bring it together. Uh, three, three, two. Counselors who understand that clients are really trying to get the truth of themselves across feel less combative towards such persons and are able to read their behavior with much greater accuracy. They catch the meaning of the whole person. So there's a follow-up to a previous quote from earlier today or yesterday where, yeah, yesterday, where the quote was um, that each person is trying to tell the truth about themselves. But this is an unconscious truth about themselves. So here are the advice is for the counselor to keep that in mind. People are trying to tell what happened to them, tell their defense mechanisms, tell what they're afraid of or what they want to share but are afraid to share. So, so counselors are trying to have this more holistic view of the person. Uh, and when they have that broader perspective, uh, they're more uh, empathetic and understanding towards their clients. Uh, an extension of this, TQ333. Counselors liberate themselves through making a pact of truth with life. They can understand and manage the challenges of counter-transference honestly and cleanly because they have learned, in a very real sense, to be counselors to themselves. So that's another way of talking about the moral revolution, to take responsibility for ourselves, to heal ourselves, to know ourselves. Here he's saying, if you make a pact with truth, counter-transference is showing you a truth about yourself, something about your unconscious. So if you have that sense of so-called moral agency, someone called it, uh, then you're, uh, you're being a counselor to yourself, right? You're, if the counselor's projecting something he doesn't like about himself onto the client, well, he needs to be honest, or he, he has the opportunity to learn more about himself through his projection, through his counter-transference. It may be that the client projected, rejecting mother, critical mother onto the therapist, and then the therapist suddenly found himself being critical, and now he's in collusion, he's acting out, the counter, that's called counter-transference, acting out. At that point, he can pause and say, what part of this was provoked uh, by the client? What part of it is actually in me, the rejecting critical mother 
or an image of the mother still within me that I just then project, projected. So the counselor may be caught in both. So anyways, he's, he's trying to make a pact of truth with himself. He wants to know, he wants to understand the challenges of counter-transference honestly. Right? He can't just say, well, that's just provoked by the, the, the client. Often clients, uh, maybe accidentally, or maybe sensed that the counselor was a very critical person. You know, so maybe he was testing the counselor. So the counselor could learn from that, and uh, that he hasn't mourned um, uh, the loss of the secure attachment style. You know, if, if he's still very bonded to the rejecting mother. But this isn't a very perfect science here, like this is still very, uh, there's a lot of overlap and things are on a spectrum here. But anyways, the point here is that the counselor is going to take responsibility for his feelings, his unconscious history, and uh, know himself. Okay, I'll just do the quick read through here. Only the amygdala is well developed at birth. In their recognition of projective identification, clients become aware of their shadow work. The reacquisition and reintegration of projected parts of the self. The heart is the capital of the mind. The mind is a single state. The heart and the mind together make a single continent. One is the population. Numerous enough, this ecstatic nation, seek, it is yourself. Counselors who understand that clients are really trying to get the truth of themselves across feel less combative towards such persons and are able to read their behavior with much greater accuracy. They catch the meaning of the whole person. Counselors liberate themselves through making a pact of truth with life. They can understand and manage the challenges of counter-transference honestly and cleanly because they have learned in a real sense to be counselors to themselves. Okay, so this just so back so this these quotes build on the previous quotes that we've presented so far. Um, shadow work and uh, the idea of counter-transference. Um, so the counter-transference is what the client, what the counselor or the therapist is projecting onto uh, the, the client. So the, something the client said or did or triggered the therapist and instead of feeling it and, or accepting it or becoming aware of it himself and being okay with it, maybe it was overwhelming. And then to deal with the anxiety of what got triggered in him, he acted out and said something critical to the therapist or, or didn't want to help the therapist anymore. See, at that point, when the counselor is engaged in counter-transference acting out, the therapy collapses. It doesn't, or it's, at that moment, it's stalled. The therapist ideally would pause apologize, explain what happened, and there's the rupture repair process. And then the therapy relationship can even be strengthened by this, you know. So maybe, maybe it's, it ended up, it ended up being uh, an aid in the process of therapy to have that experience. Maybe the client really benefited immensely by that experience, having the client, uh, the therapist admit his mistake and uh, apologize and uh, Maybe that built further trust, you know. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I, I guess I'll just leave it here. This has been TQ329. But <laughs> so there's a funny movie called Bob and His Enlarged Amygdala. It's a comedy. I hope if you see it, you, 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 you will laugh. It's a comedy. Um, but it says some important, it makes some important points. Um, one of the running jokes throughout that film is how to pronounce amygdala. Is it, is it this? Do we pronounce it this way? Is it pronounced this way? No one knows how to pronounce amygdala. 
I think finally in the end someone pronounced it properly. <laughs> no, at the very end they still mispronounced it. <laughs> so it was the ongoing gag throughout the movie. How do you pronounce amygdala? <laughs> is it amygdala or is it? <laughs> Apparently it's amygdala. <laughs> and uh, projective identification. So what the client projects into someone else and then tries to coax the other person to adopt that projection. Every man is my mirror. So the shadow work is to, to confess and say, yes, I think I have that, but I'm denying it myself. That's called shadow work. We have the wonderful poem by Emily Dickinson. And, uh, and that uh, counselors are encouraged to, to uh, understand the positive intention behind the client's defense mechanisms. Uh, and as well, counselors are encouraged to to engage in the moral revolution themselves, to know themselves as well. Right. Okay, um, so thank you very much. This has been TQ 329 to 333. More to follow. Thank you. Bye for now.